Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Let's do this. 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 So I get a lot of questions about slow pitch jigging. How do you do it? What's the exact technique? Do you do it when you're anchored or are you drifting? What line do you use? What's the best jig? And do I really need that slow pitch gear setup, the rod, the reel, all that goodness? Well, in this episode, I'm going to help answer some of those questions. I'm going to go over the technique you should be using when slow pitch jigging. I'm going to go over the gear if you want to make that commitment, the jigs and when to use them, and what line, and how to deal with current and different situations when it comes to slow pitch jigging. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. So the first thing we're going to go over is we're going to go over the technique. I get questions about this and this seems to be one of the most common questions. How exactly do you do it? It's not vertical jigging, right? You're not always reeling and getting going. And there is specific ways to hold your reel so that you make the jig and the rod the extension of your arm and you learn to play the jig and make the jig act as if it is a fish trying to retreat from the seabed. So the first more basic way to hold your rod and to work with it is to keep the butt of your rod underneath your armpit, your reel in your hand. Now, a very important thing about slow jigging is you don't want to pull and wind up that slack. That is not what you want to do. If you're winding up your slack on your line on the fall, the jig is not doing, well, what it's supposed to do, which is fluttering down after you pitch it. What you want to do is you'll reel, load the rod, and then give it a little tug, and then let it fall. Once you see the tip of your rod bounce, or you get into the motion, you can do it continuously. So you pull like this. The problem with having your butt of your rod tucked up underneath your arm is that you're limited in your motion. So if I'm doing this, I'm not really getting a good motion. A more advanced way to hold your rod for slow pitch jigging when I say advanced, don't take it the wrong way. It's, uh, it's more active. It makes it so that the rod is an extension of your arm and it makes it so that you can work the jig and make the jig react more so like an uh, injured fish. What you want to do is you'll want to take the butt of your rod and put it underneath your forearm instead of under here. If it's underneath your forearm, you, can, you get a whole swinging motion. So you jig and you do this, you jig, and you, it's almost like you can throw it a little bit. So this is the motion that you want to get. Underneath the forearm is more controlled. Then when you get the hook up, you wind up your slack and you can move it to underneath your arm. And that is where you'll get the power to wind in your fish. Now again, winding in your fish is not up and down. It's a slow, constant pull. Basically, you're going to keep that line tight. So again, underneath the forearm, you wind, and you pull, wind, pull, and it's not always full winds. It can be half winds, and then again, you can just kind of play the jig. You'll feel it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you out on the water and show you what this looks like in reality, how you get that play from the rod, and your arm is the extension of the jig, and how exactly you do these cranks and these pulls to make the jig pitch and fall when you're out there doing it you actually feel it you get more in tune with what your jig is doing and you're able to control it if you see the way i'm holding the jig i don't have it underneath my arm like this taking loading the rod and releasing it what i'm doing is i've got it down under here that way the jig is an extension of my arm pull load let it fall if 
you are winding on the fall, you're not really letting the slopage jig do what it's supposed to do. Part of the slow pitch jigging technique is to wind on the way up. You don't want to wind on the way on the fall of a slow pitch jig. You're typically going to get your hookups on the fall. Okay, so there was a hands-on experience of slow pitch jigging. That is the technique that I like to use, the under the forearm. Like I said, you can go with the under the armpit, but it's a little bit more limited in its range of motion. The next area I want to go over is the actual use of the slow pitch jig. You're really bottom fishing. Now, I mean, slow pitch jigging does cover the whole water column. You get predators like bonitas, tunas, wahoo, everything. Part of the slow jigging is ground contact also. Keeping not too far away from the ground because you are essentially bottom fishing a lot of the time. Now there are techniques and slow jigging does work throughout the whole water column, but you gotta remember, you're fishing for groupers, snappers, cobia, bottom fish. So in order to effectively do this, you want to do what is called keeping in contact with your ground. This means you're not winding up very far. So let's do the math. Basically, one crank on your reel is about three to four feet. You don't want to go much further than six to eight pulls before you let back down, you check the bottom, get in contact, and start the process over. Again, bottom fishing, ground contact, very important, okay? Now we can fish the whole water column and every time you do a drop, you can go all the way up and then release and let back down and go for your straight up and down presentation, which is what we're looking for. But more often than not, making those six, eight, maybe 10 pulls, letting it back down, get in contact with the ground and start over again, that's what we're looking for, those bottom predators. The more you do this, the more comfortable you will get and the more proficient you will get at it. And then you'll begin to hunt and find the perfect ground to fish on. Now, along with checking the ground all the time, six to eight pulls, let it down, check the ground, six to eight pulls, let it down, come back in contact, Again, your line is going to start telescoping out from your boat. If your line is telescoping out from your boat, let's say I'm drifting this way. I'm going to pull back this way. That way my jig is pitched this way and it flutters straight down. Pitched this way and it flutters straight down. Pull back, flutters, pull back, and you flutter. It's when you're drifting, it's hard to keep a straight up and down presentation because you want to be in current. To keep that straight up and down presentation, you pitch towards you and it flutters straight down. Pitch towards you, flutters straight down. The one thing you don't want to do is let it get way out there. You can do this process of winding up and getting going and dropping, you know, three, four, maybe five times before it telescopes way too far out and then it's actually being ineffective as a jig. The next thing I wanna go over is the gear. Personally, I am a strong proponent of do not invest in slow pitch jigging unless you're willing to make a commitment. Now, if you're willing to make a commitment and you've tested out the waters and you're ready to dive in and say, okay, I'm gonna do this, what is it that I gotta to do to get real slow pitch gear? You're gonna to wanna to do it. You're gonna to wanna to move out of that spinner and that really bendy rod, and maybe you're conventional with a you know a very pliable reel and rod on it, and you're gonna to wanna to move into more traditional standard slow pitch gear, which is something like this. What this is, is this is an accurate boss from the Fury series. It's a 600N, a 600 Nera, packed with braid. You need braid to jig properly. Do not try to jig with monofilament. It stretches 
and your jig will not act right. So I have 900 yards of 30 pound braid on this reel. And then I have a top shot of about 15 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon on this reel. The fluorocarbon is attached to the braid with a knot called an Alberto knot. Very simple, very quick to tie. Once you practice it a few times, you'll be good to go. Next thing that's important is the rod. Now everybody says the rod's the most important thing in slow pitch jigging. No, it isn't. It's an all-inclusive combination of everything that's important. The rod is very important. It gives you the right flex and bend and the ability to pitch and let that jig fall. This rod is a star rod from the Plasma 2 series. It's six foot six. This is a slow pitch rod. Everybody says, oh, it's the rod that looks like the bass fishing rod. Sure it is, but you can really put some heat on this rod and it'll take it. It's made to bend and flex and really handle hefty fish that come up from the bottom. This rod's guides are acid wrapped. What this means is they start out on top here and they wrap counterclockwise to the tip to be on the bottom. The guides are on top and they start curving counterclockwise and they end up on the bottom. So the theory is is that this keeps your line from ever touching the blank of your rod, which is what you want because you're using braid and you don't want to compromise your braid. So if you've gotten into slow pitch jigging and you're willing to make the commitment, my suggestion is go out and invest in the gear. It'll make it so that you can do jigging all day long. Without proper gear, it gets heavy on your arm, you can get worn out, and you don't want to go out there and say, hey, I'm going to go have a day worth of jigging and call it quits after an hour because you're putting a hurting on yourself. This gear is super light. I can go for hours with this. I'm not trying to tell you don't do it with other gear. I've done it with other gear such as a standard spinning reel with braid for years. So when it comes to the gear and slow pitch jigging, cost is always a concern. The fact of the matter is, is that as time has gone on, the gear is more widely available and it is becoming more budget friendly. Seven, eight years ago, you couldn't find anything. You had to get it all online and it was super expensive. Rods were six, eight hundred dollars. Jigs were 50 bucks each. So that being said, if you're looking for gear that is rather budget friendly, I'm going to mention a manufacturer that is in the ballpark. If you're looking for something to get you going and you're still kind of wondering but you want the gear, I would look at the manufacturer Goofish. They make budget friendly rods and you can get going. Take one of your reels that you already have, pack it with braid and get going. Now I want to talk a little bit about jigs and jig selection. It's a process you have to learn. It involves understanding your depth and your current mainly. It's the difference between using what they call a long jig or a stick jig, using a stub or using a fat boy. Here's the way this works. In a nutshell, if you have no current, you're gonna to wanna to use what they call a fat boy. It's a dense, wide, on all angles jig. The next jig I wanna go over is the stub. This is the most common jig. This is a stub jig. It's called a medium jig. Not as wide as a fat boy. And it's not as thick. This jig is made for some current. You can use it in no current. You don't want to necessarily use it in high current, but these jigs more often than not are the ones you're using in everyday current situations. Now I want to explain the thing about depth. The deeper you go, the heavier the jig you're gonna wanna use. This is a 200 gram jig. You can use this jig in 150 feet. You can use it in 200 feet. You can also get it down to about 300 to 350 in the right current situations. You don't wanna go much more than that. One gram of weight when it comes to slow pitch jigging equals about one to three feet of depth. However, this is a 200 gram jig. I'm not really gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna let it out in 600 feet of water. It'll telescope way out and I won't really be slow pitch jigging. I'll just be trying to retrieve my jig. But I will let this down to 400 in the right current situations. And the last type of jig is the long jig, also known as the stick jig. 
This is the one you want to use in high current situations. Offshore, you're in three, four, five knots of current. You'll want to use this. That way you can help maintain that vertical presentation. A wider jig in four or five knots of current is going to drag you out and telescope your line out so that you're not really jigging, you're just retrieving. And now I'm going to answer this question about line. I get the, hey, do I need braid? Yes, you need braid. You need braid to jig. Any type of jigging, vertical jigging or slow pitch jigging, you need braid to make your jig react properly. As I said before, my reel is packed with 900 yards of 30 pound braid. When it comes to line selection, you got to be careful. Braid is another one of those counterintuitive aspects of fishing. You would think, hey, if I'm going out deeper, I'm going to need the bigger, tougher line in case I get this giant fish. That's what you don't want to think. The deeper you go, the thinner you'll want your braid. If I was consistently fishing in a thousand feet of water, I would more than likely not want to use 30 pound braid. I would want to tone it down to 20, 15, maybe even 10. Now braid is ultra tough. You're not going to break it. So that 10 pound test braid, I would have no problem fishing with it in deep water. Here's the concept you need to understand. The thicker the line, it bellies out the deeper you drop it. The thinner the line, especially with braid, it cuts through the water. It doesn't make as big of a belly, therefore maintaining your vertical presentation better than the thicker line. If you're really into it, technically speaking, you can go with what's called PE braid. Stands for polyurethane braid. What that is, is it's even thinner and stronger than standard J braid. All right, folks, so I hope this has helped out. We've gone over the technique of slow pitch jigging. You can keep it up under your armpit or you can keep it under your forearm. The under the forearm, I believe, gives you more motion, puts you more in control of your jig. We went over how to deal with that current and your line telescoping out. Is it okay? It most definitely is. More often than not, you are drifting when you're slow pitch jigging. You're exploring the land. You're finding the places. You are imitating an injured prey fish trying to escape from the seabed. Therefore, most of the time, we're bottom fishing. We went over the jigs, the differences between the jigs, the fat boys, the stubs, the long jigs. What do you use? We use fat boys in no current. We use stubs in everyday average situations with some current. And the long jig. Man, you're in high current, four or five knots, bust out your long jigs. Also, keep in mind your depth. The deeper the water, the heavier the jig. And we went over that line. If you want a jig, you need braid. It's that simple. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit about the technique, the gear, and the jigs for slow pitch jigging. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.